Welcome, welcome back to Living Higher. For this week, I want to read a letter from Rav Yitzhak Kuna, a letter that Rav Yitzhak Kuna wrote to a married individual who was struggling, bemoaning the fact that he once held such lofty aspirations, such lofty goals, and he didn't know where those aspirations went. He feels that like all hope is lost. And Rav Kuna writes to him a letter that it, it is such a powerful letter. It has such tremendous, tremendous physic in it. So many Yisaitis, Mamish, tremendous Yisaitis, tremendous, tremendous physic, especially considering the fact that it's coming from a Gadol like Rav Hutner. So I want to read this letter. I took the liberty of translating it. And we'll go through it. And I hope that you'll get the physic out of it that I, that I got. So this letter could be found in Pachar Yitzchak, in Igaris Mechtavim, in Kuv Chavches. Rav Huntner writes, Your letter reached me, and your words have touched my heart. You should know, Habibi, your letter contradicts the descriptions it contains, and I'll explain to you why I'm making this assessment. And at the end of the letter, we'll understand what he means by this line. But he says, Rav Huntner says, It's a problem that when we talk about the perfection of our G'daylem, we talk about the later stages of their heights. We tell over about their perfection while skipping over their inner struggles which raged in their souls. The impression that we get of our G'daylem, Rav Huna writes, is that they were created with their stature. For example, everyone talks about how pure the Chavitz Chaim's speech was. But who knows the battles, the struggles, the obstacles, the falls and regressions the Chavetz Chaim experienced in his fight with the Yitzhahara. Rav Hunter is saying in this first paragraph, he's saying, we're so used to a Gadol being a Gadol that we think that this is the way they were born. They were born being a Gadol. We don't realize the fights that they had with the Yitzhahara to get to this point, to get to this lofty level that we know of them right now. And Rav Hunter writes, what comes out from this is when someone with ambition and aspiration sees that he is experiencing struggles, regressions, and falls, he views himself as not having been planted in the house of Hashem. Why? Because in his view, to be planted in the house of Hashem means to live with tranquility of the soul on a green meadow beside the water, enjoying the Yetzir Tov the way that Tzadikim enjoy the Shekhinah, and to not be angry that you're encountering the Yetzir along the way. But you should know, Habibi Rav Hunter writes, that the root of your soul is not tranquility, but rather, specifically, the war of the Yetzir Tov against the Yetzir Again, Rav Hunter is writing that when somebody, what happens because we're so used to thinking of our G'daylem on being at such a lofty level, we don't realize the struggles that they went through to get to where they are. So when we see, if we have ambitions, if we have goals, if we have aspirations, and we see that we're struggling with our Yitzhahara, we start to think, oh man, you know, I'm not cut out for this. I'm not planted in, in the house of Hashem. Why? Because I don't have this tranquil path that the tzaddikim have, that they're just there with the Yitzhahara, and they're just doing everything right, everything perfect. Look at me. I'm struggling. I, I can't do it. I'm not doing it. What's Rav Hunter saying? The root of your soul is not tranquility. It is the war of the Yitzhahara against the Yitzhahara. And Rav Hunter writes, from your letter, it is evident that you are fighting this war. There is a saying in English, lose the battle, but win the war. And Rav Hunter writes, you have surely stumbled and will stumble again. And you will fall in many of these battles. However, I promise you, says Rav Hunter, that after you have lost these battles, you will emerge with the wreath of victory on your head. Why? Because it's not about the battle. It's about the war. Lose the battle, win the war. The point is the struggle with the Yitzhahara. The point is not to give up. The point isn't not to have the struggle. Rav Hunter continues, The wisest of all people, Shlomo HaMelech said, Sheva yipot tzaddik v'kam. The tzaddik falls seven times and he gets back up. Says Rav Hunter, The foolish people think that what does it mean, Sheva Yipot Tzadik Vakam? 
that what does it mean that the tzaddik falls seven times and that he gets back up? The foolish people think that what that means is the tzaddik falls seven times and still he manages to get back up. Despite the fact that he fell, he manages to get back up. That's what a tzaddik is. Rav Hunter says no. The wise people know that what it means is that the ascent to becoming a tzaddik, the way to become a tzaddik is by falling seven times. It's by struggling with the Yitzhahara, by falling down, losing that battle, getting back up, trying again, falling down, losing that battle, getting back up, trying again. That is the path to becoming a tzaddik. It's not despite the falls that you've gotten back up. It's because of your falls. It's the fact that you are struggling with the Yitzhahara and you keep on getting back up and you struggle and you get back up and you struggle and you get back up. That is what makes you into a tzaddik. And he brings down the Pasuk and Barisha says, The Yar is called Asher Asa, Vihine Toiv Ba'ir. HaKadosh Baruch who saw everything that he made and it was Toiv Ba'ir, it was very good. The Medr Shibrash Rabbi he brings down says that Toiv is referring to Yetzir Toiv. When HaKadosh Baruch who said he saw that it was good, this is referring to Yetzir Toiv. Yetzir Toiv is good. But Ma'ir, that it was very good? What's Ma'id referring to? Ma'id is referring to the Yitzhahara. Toiv, good, is referring to the Yitzhah Toiv. Toiv Ma'id, the very good, that's referring to the Yitzhahara. And he continues the letter in that vein. He says, I will hold you close to my heart and I will whisper into your ear. If you had sent me a letter telling me how well you were doing, meaning, how, you, how the Yitzhah Toiv was the one influencing you, how good everything was going for you, how there weren't any struggles, there weren't any problems, I would have said that I received a good letter. Toiv, it's good. The Yitzhah Toiv is Toiv. Now that you told me, Rav Huna writes, about your struggles and your falls, I will say that I received Toiv Ma'ayr. I will say that I received a very good letter from you. And he explains, it's like a huge storm when you are striving to be great I beg of you, he writes, don't picture to yourself that Gedolim and the Yeritzatayv are one and the same. Rather, imagine that the Gedolim are at war with all of their lowest and their basest tendencies. And here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. Ravuna writes, when you feel the Yeritzahara storming within you, you should know, now you are more comparable to the Gedolim, even more then in times of calm that you desire, it is specifically in those places that you find yourself being pulled down that you become capable of increasing covered Shemayim. Again, Rav is saying, when are you more comparable to Agadol? Not in times of calm. Not in times when everything is going good and you're not having any issues, you're not having any Eurydice, you're not having any Nefilas, you're not being besieged by the Yitzhahara. Even though that's what you want, and even though that's what you desire, that's not when you're comparable to the Gedalim, says Rav Hunter. When are you comparable to a Gadol? And specifically in the places that you find yourself being pulled down, when you feel the Yitzhahara storming within you, now you are more comparable to the Gedalim. And he says that it's at that point they become capable of increasing Kavad Shemayim. What does that mean you're capable of increasing Kavit Shemayim? So you have to think for a minute. When a person's faced with an Nisayan, what's going on at that point? When a person's besieged by the Yitzhahara and there's something that he really wants to see, he really wants to do, he wants to listen, what, wants to go, whatever it is. At that point, it's like you're getting a message from Hashem saying, I need you to step up to the plate right now. This is your moment. This is your time that you could say, I am going to step up to the plate. I am going to overcome this Nisayan, and this is the greatest way to bring Kavit Shemayim. Rav Hunter ends off the letter by saying, I write these words to you so that you can peruse them from time to time. And it is so important for ourselves also to think about these words that again come from a Gadol like Rav Hunter, these words of Chizik, whenever we're feeling down, whenever we feel like the struggle is getting too much for us to handle, whenever we're feeling dejected, to refer back to this letter, look at it inside, read it a few times, print it out, have this letter handy so that you can refer back to it. And Rav Hunter ends off with a P.S. 
He says, now you understand the opening line of my letter, which was that your letter contradicts the descriptions that it contained. What does that mean? You started off how you're in a low place, how you've lost aspirations, how you're falling, how far you are from being a gadol, how far you are from being the person that you want to be. It's the exact opposite. It's that struggle. It's those you read us, those nefilas, and the getting back up and the struggling and the not giving up. That's what's going to build you up. We're here to struggle with our Yitzhahara and to try to overcome. We're not here for a ride on easy street. That's not what we're here for. People think, you know, if you have a Yitzhahara, that's an Avera. It's a problem if I have a, a Yitzhahara. There's nothing wrong with having a Yitzhahara. We're supposed to struggle with the Yitzhahara. That's how we grow. That's what turns us into the people that we want to become. Let's try to live a little higher and let's realize that this is what it's all about. It's about the fight. It's about the battle. It's about the struggle. It's about getting knocked down, but getting back up. And not getting back up despite the fact that I get knocked down. It's getting back up knowing that I'm going to get knocked down again, but I am not going to give up the fight no matter how long it takes. Even if it's my whole life, I will fight with the Yitzhahara because that is what I am supposed to do. That is how I am Marbekovid Shemayim.